All right, today I wanted to take a look at new Dallas Cowboy, Neville Gallimore. The Oklahoma, or formerly Oklahoma, defensive tackle was the Cowboys' third round selection, going pick number 82. Standing six foot two, 300 pounds, carrying a pretty typical, approximately 33 inch arms at 32 and a quarter, ran a 47940. You're going to see that linear athletic ability. Some of the questions on Gallimore surrounded some of the short area change of direction, and his combine scores didn't really impress with a 7973 cone and uh, 501 short shuttle. Those, those times are in the lower percentiles relative to the position. That said, the Cowboys under, have gone under some changes here. They have a new head coach who brought in a new defensive coordinator in Mike Nolan. have a new defensive line coach in Jim Tom Sula. And it's interesting to see a player like Gallimore, who may have been a fit in a previous regime under Rod Marinelli for some of the penetration-based and the effort-based stuff. But those things are going to be things that every defensive coordinator wants to get their hands on, and it's going to be no different here. So Mike Nolan has said that he wants a swarming type mentality and that 3-4 versus 4-3 is just a matter of spacing. He doesn't really see that as a key indicator and in what he believes. So I wanted to take a look at what does Gallimore bring to this defense. One thing it does, it helps lessen the blow of the loss of Malik Collins. Played a lot of snaps for the Cowboys here the last few years. He departed for Oakland, again, carrying a very similar body type, very similar 40 time. Uh, I'm sorry, very similar body type. 40 time Malik was a little slower, but he was better in the short area movements. So one of the things that's hard when you see a player in these fronts, uh, again, in this case, Oklahoma, it runs a lot of this 404, as we used to call it. Uh, some people will call it an odd front. Some people want that to be 505. We won't get into the the, the, <laughs> the fine tuning of that stuff. But you're going to see Gallimore again a lot in these head up or zero alignments. And it does make it difficult when you want to assess some of the gap penetration stuff because he's not aligned, obviously, in that kind of spacing. But when I look through Gallimore's tape, I really came more and more attracted to this Peach Bowl game against the eventual national champions in LSU, in part because of these two players here. The center for LSU, Lloyd Cushenberry, went third round to Denver. The right guard here, Damian Lewis, went third round to the Seattle Seahawks. And so all three of these players are third round picks. And we're going to see some great individual matchups in addition to the scheme piece. So one of the things that, again, when you start to talk about spacing and how do we use players is initial alignment doesn't always dictate where the player is going to end up, and that's going to be no different here. So we're going to see some twist game here from Oklahoma, so they're going to have some pre-snap alignment change. Now, we're going to see Gallimore really fight to penetrate here, and then we're going to see the twist naturally occur off of that. So what they're trying to do is bring one player through here, bring this guy back around the other way. The problem they face is they get the slide side of the protection in this particular case. Three covering two is not a great number. But one of the things that stood out to me here is Gallimore has a really great feel. You're going to see when Lewis comes to engage, you're going to see Gallimore feel that head drop, and he's going to get his eyes up, and you're going to see this arm come over the top. He's a really great arm over timing. So there we go. So now he's got his arm free. Lewis is off balance and moving forward. Now, again, if it wasn't for the fact that this defensive end telegraphs this move, really you want this guy to come upfield a little more before he loops in, really make this tackle pass set. In this case, he immediately puts a foot in the ground and starts redirecting. So now immediately the right tackle closes the gap. That puts Gallimore in a bad spot. But you are going to see a lot of effort out and fight out of him, which is something that every defensive coordinator is going to want to get their hands on. So now, again, want to see what does it look like when we change gaps, when we stick and move. So in this case, you're going to see a gap reduction to A, but we're going to have, again, the center turn, the protection this way, and Gallimore clearly in the system has some freedom to read the center's movements and ultimately get what we would call a two-way go off of that. So you're going to see Cushenberry get the ball off here, and he's got a really quick set. So he immediately, boom, closes distance. So Gallimore, who's sticking to A-gap, there's not a lot of space here. One, he still has the left guard paying attention to him. Cushenberry's really closing this. And so he has the awareness to now realize that this opposite A-gap is available to him. He's got the freedom to for a two-way go because this is clearly a closed-off lane. And he's going to feel that, 
and go try to stick himself over. We see that arm over again, and we'll slow it down and bring it back right here. Boom, there's that arm over right over the top of Cushionberry in this case. Now, when he needs to get better as when he finishes these moves to drop his hips just a little bit more, put a lot of weight on that offensive lineman's arm and keep them from staying up under his pads. But he fights through it here, and now he's got to run. We used to do a hula hoop drill, literally put a hula hoop down and have him run around. Now he's got to work that drill, trying to turn and corner, and Bro gets himself out of dodge on that one. So I said before, one difficult part is, again, these head-up rush opportunities because this is not a designed rush scenario. Like when you're setting up a defense saying, hey, I want the guy who's literally nose-to-nose -nose with an offensive lineman to be an impact rusher is not necessarily an expectation. So in a lot of cases, this player is either working for knockback or they're going to have some twist game or these players are going to rush. And then this guy almost equates to a spy. He's going to kind of feel himself around and navigate from there. So again, not a crazy amount of expectation, but when we do get in these scenarios, we do want to see what they're capable of in a, in a reduced pass rush opportunity. So Burrow's going to check things here. Doesn't change anything with the Oklahoma front. And now we're going to see that initial drive and power on contact out of Gallimore here. So he comes down, he keeps his Pad level low, good body lean. You can tell that because his helmet is lower than Cushionberry's here. Gets a hand placement, at least on that shoulder. We can't quite see where his right hand ends up. And he's trying to use this left hand to actually push that shoulder. He's trying to turn that shoulder with power so that he can either arm over or rip back over and get here. And he just misses it. In this case, unfortunately, he just misses that fit just a little bit. You can see his arm. I'll bring it back for one second here. Flashes. You see his arm completely come across, and now it's over because Cushionberry is a really quality player, and he's going to sit up underneath his pads now, and he's going to ride out the rest of this thing for the win. Great effort, though. Again, you're going to see constantly Gallimore never stops trying, and I swear that's one of those things that's going to endear him to every potential coaching staff. So we talked before about twist game. Again, as Nolan comes in, we're going to see some different fronts. Um, and when you, you're not going to see static alignment out of him. He keeps talking about the swarming type mentality. Don't want the offense to get too comfortable. And so we're going to see those things uh, via twist game, via gap reduction. So in this case, it's going to be a pretty classic TT twist. One tackle is going to go first. Second tackle is going to follow. The key to this is the path of the looper. All right. If he runs all the way out here outside of City Charles where the play starts, He's never going to get to the quarterback. What he has to anticipate is, is this guy reduces. If this guy matches, you want to hug this thing about as tight as you can and reduce that path if you're going to have any chance to get there. So let's see how Gallimore works as a looper here in twist game. Again, we got our checks to the line. And right there is a little bit. You know, these things are not, do not help that get off in the initial piece. They do make an adjustment right the last second. Oklahoma's a little late getting this adjustment in. So they're moving. You can see he barely gets his back foot underneath him, and now the ball's out. All right, not, you know, an ideal loaded stance in this situation. But he does a good job. You can see he actually sells it vertical. Cushionberry is setting for him moving up. Now he waits for this guy to penetrate. He's got the center turned. Now he's going to work off of that and come around. And again, we see Sadiq Charles close here. So it's all about Gallimore's path to loop around there. He gets a little bit wide. Again, we had those concerns with some of the, the hip mobility and flexibility pieces. Um, again, his combine numbers didn't really assuage any fears on that side. So not the, the most fluid hips for turning a corner, but the effort to finish is really high end. Now, we've seen the arm over a couple times. The other move that he really, really likes is the spin. Unfortunately, he hasn't got it fully polished yet. So it's one of those things that he's going to need to work on uh, to take this to the next level. So he fires off. He knows he's going to load the spin from the first second. And you're going to start to see it right here. This arm going up, he's trying to prep himself for it. He's trying to drop this shoulder. And unfortunately, this is almost a dead giveaway at this point to Damian Lewis that this thing's coming. Now, Lewis is not ready for it. He's going to end up you know, getting himself overextended outside here. Here's the problem. When you want to execute this spin move, you're trying to get to this hit by the time you're done. Because if you're not to the hit by the time you're done with the spin move, you're just spinning inside their chest. All right, so right now he's got his back fully exposed 
to Damian Lewis here. Now, again, Lewis gets his own self out of position, which is going to help Gallimore. But Gallimore is straight up and down with his back to the offensive lineman. That's not ideal for the spin move. He needs to really sink this elbow inside the rib cage. You're going to pound that elbow back in the rib cage because you want to keep this guy from getting a hand back on you in any way, shape, or form. He doesn't really load that left arm, doesn't really close that well. And you can see Lewis get back underneath his shoulder pad, and now we're going to start to see drive out of Lewis to close that. There's a, Gallimore could have had him, and I think he has the ability to get this better and hit this move. He just didn't get it this time. If he can get that cleaned up, it can be an effective move for him moving forward. So let's take a look over what does that mean for Dallas. Again, this front last year was a little different under uh, Chris Richard and Rod Marianelli, but we are going to see what Malik Collins brought to the table and some of what Dallas uh, did last year because I do think some of it's translatable. So, again, we're going to see a little stick-to-A move and, again, the ability for a defensive lineman to read this on the fly and make adjustments to his ultimate aiming point as he comes to uh, attack that. So he's in a cross face inside. And again, you see this pinning of the outside arm. And then he's in a load, try to load a rip here. Instead of the arm over, he's going to try to pull that right arm through. He never ends up getting there. He's getting hugged. He finally hits the arm over way at the end. But by that point, he's been washed pretty well out of the play. But clearly one of those things when you're doing gap reduction, that awareness, that ability to see and adjust to that is going to be important. So in this case, we're going to see uh, a TE twist. So tackle is going to be the penetrator. This end is going to loop inside. And really, again, this is going to be in every defensive coordinator's arsenal. And there's some really unique things here uh, that are going to be impactful and stuff that Gallimore, again, as he adds this to his repertoire, can really, again, make a difference. So they're going to cheat this out to a 4 eye. And what you're going to see here is when he comes off, he's going to sink this rip, right? Marinelli's great at this. He's going to sink this rip. And really, he's actually trying to pull this guard. He's trying to pull this guard with him because he wants to create that opening for the looper coming back inside. This is not straight pass rush. This is twist game. Now, as he pulls this guy, he then wants to collision and crash into the tackle because what's ultimately going to happen is this guard is going to end up having to bump off and try to pick up the end. If the guard does a good job of bumping off and coming back outside, you want to hit the tackle and ricochet back in as quickly as possible, and then you'll be the player that's coming free. So again, if twist game is executed properly, you really should be able to work off any offensive line combo in terms of how they want to pass it off and be in good position. So Collins is going to sink that rep. He's going to collision here in the Moses. Moses has a lot of mass on him, so don't really get a ricochet here quite to the same degree, and Moses able to stay connected and wash him by. But being able to work in tandem with a player, be that penetrator, be that force to occupy is going to be really important. So they're going to overload in terms of having three to one side of the center, and then they're going to run a little TT twist here. So again, want to see that that loop is part of this Dallas or was part of the Dallas arsenal, something that Collins was asked to do. And again, something I would anticipate Mike Nolan bringing as he adds more versatility to the front and some of the alignments that they get into. So now it's time to take a look on the run side of things for Gallimore. So they're going to change a gap here in just a second. Now he's going to get a little back block here from the center, but we're going to see what that, that acceleration and that linear ability here does for him. So the center is going to unfortunately step inside of himself and take away some of this angle to try to execute this block. It looks like maybe there was some sort of seal and how they wanted to execute this. Either way, this next bit from Gallimore in terms of his ability to, boom, penetrate up field is, again, something that everyone's going to want because that disruption in the mesh point is going to be really impactful. Now, in this case... He's got a person coming across. Quarterback's going to keep it. That's not his play out here. Now, we would like to see him be able to pivot and turn a little faster in terms of coming flatter. He ends up just planting his foot and redirecting, which is fine. It's, it's something you're going to use a lot versus draw plays. You're going to use a lot in the screen game. You know, stop and retrace your steps. Um, if he's got his eyes up and saw the mesh point a little faster, maybe he could have come flatter. But again, the biggest point here is his penetration and him getting upfield. Really good stuff there. And again, the hustle. He's never going to stop. So 
the most common run you're going to see from anybody are inside zone and duo type concepts where you're trying to get some two on ones immediately. So Gallimore is aligned over here in a three technique and we're going to see this guard stay attached for a second and he's ultimately climbing and the guard staying attached because the tackle's trying to take this block over and really good stuff here from Gallimore. So as the ball snapped, he immediately reacts to the key matches that shoulder. Now, he collisions, which is keeping his linebacker clean. He's also taking good enough angle. It's really a stretch now for this tackle to get all the way across him. Now, this guard's trying to depart, trying to climb up to linebacker depth. And eventually when he does, Gallimore's in great position. He's all over that shoulder and hip, and he's going to end up backdooring this thing. Great work there against the backside of his own block. All right, so here we're going to see a little gap exchange. We're going to see a stunt – or I'm sorry, not a stunt. We're going to see them stick. These two players stick to the next gap. But this play is coming back at him. So really unique here that he's sticking this. The left guard comes back at him. He's got to try to refit that. You can see he ends up getting his foot completely off the ground here. And a lot of guys, you're going to see them lose balance at this point. You have two players engage with you. You have a foot off the ground. We do see some contact balance here. It's not consistent in every game. He did end up on the ground. Um, but it is within his ability when he can keep his center of gravity a little lower and not quite play so tall. So he ends up, again, cleaning off his hands here. It's tough with this sky cam in the way. But he's going to get his left arm free here, and he's going to be in position to help try to finish on this tackle. All right, so one of the problems that we have is when you don't see it in time and when you're not in position. So after this pre-snap movement here, we're going to get the same type of thing we just saw against Kansas. The problem with this one is he doesn't see it the same way. He's a little late on it. it doesn't match the angles in the same way because the last time we saw it against Kansas, he was already all over this shoulder. All right, so he's a little late and he's got more of a vertical, draw that line better, a vertical place here. So he gets bumped off by the guard. Ultimately, the tackle seals him off. He does fall on the tackle down the field, but not, not as sound as he's capable of. So one of those pieces. And the, and the pad level thing is going to be the hard part for him. It's one of those things he just has to continue to drill and rep on. He can bend. He can get lower. He just doesn't do it with consistency, particularly in these situations where we get the two-on-one. Here's two third-rounders all over him. It's a lot of mass, a lot of strength, a lot of ability. Lewis does a good job of staying low, refitting up underneath him, and it ends up getting him tall and washed out of there, which is not ideal. The reason we go through all that series are these are the things we're going to see in the NFL, right? These are the same kind of blocks uh, and things that we're going to have to be capable of defending in order to be an interior defensive lineman. Certainly the pass rush ability is huge, but we are going to see run plays. So immediately we have this combo up to the linebacker depth. And you can see a really good job of getting hip to hip. There's no spacing with these guys. They've got him bumped off. Now they've created a seal. Because, again, you get a block here and a block here, and they're coming off for Smith. And so what gets really tough is that you got to fight and split that. you got to be in between that to be in your gap. Philly does a really good job, and Collins is a little late getting off of that. So that was more of a play side situation. Now we're going to see it more to the back side here. And again, same thing in that we're going to get the guard staying close so that we can get this immediate two-on-one to help the tackle take over. And then the guard's going to depart for the linebacker level. And again, this is where as a defensive lineman, you got to keep your color in your gap which he's able to do there. Now, the most common stuff we're going to see are in the inside zone that duo, those combo type blocks. But we are still going to see a good old fashioned base block from time to time. And so the ability to stay low, play with power is never going anywhere in terms of the game of football. But again, we talked about how Gallimore would have most likely been a fit for Marinelli's system. 
Uh, we're looking at what it's going to be like under Nolan. And when you have guys like Nolan and guys like Jim Tom Sewell as a D-line coach, ultimately the effort piece of this is going to be the thing that's going to sell a player to any coaching staff because you know this guy's always fighting to give you everything he's got. And you just see it from Gallimore on every play. And the one that really stood out to me is you're going to see him here at the three tech. You're going to get, again, the slide side his way. And this is a really difficult situation as a pass rusher because they just have more than you can handle. So he's a looks like a reduction here. He sees Cushenberry has got this taken care of. So now he's going to try to stay in this gap. He works his arm over again. Very common move from him. Lewis stays down, but he never stops. He never stops. He keeps fighting. He keeps fighting. His eyes are at the quarterback. He's looking for Burrow, and he's even going to try to get his hand up to deflect this pass. So even when he doesn't get home, he's always working to try to make an impact. Those are the kind of things that are going to get every coaching staff excited. Gallimore has upfield burst. He has the ability to be a penetrator. He has the effort and the mentality that you're looking for. There's some technical things he's going to work on, but you can see the areas where in the third round they felt like they were getting a valuable player that can come in, fill for what Collins just left them, and give Nolan some pieces moving forward.